Good morning, everyone. My name is Researcher Miller, and the SCP we're going to be studying today is SCP-3199. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. All live instances of SCP-3199 are to be contained in Site-114 within a Keter humanoid containment chamber, the walls of which should be coated in approximately 2 cm thick, acid-resistant steel. Two meters of empty space are to be allocated between this chamber and secondary containment. Secondary containment consists of suspending all live instances of SCP-3199 inside a solid block of strong transparent substance, currently clear acrylic resin. The block is to be at a height of at least 3 meters, with one armed security guard stationed directly outside initial containment at all times. An 8-digit passcode can be obtained from the current Site-114 director in order to access the initial containment chamber and allow for up-close examination of SCP-3199's behavior and appearance. CCTV equipment is, however, installed in one corner of the containment cell for remote observation. Secondary containment is to be regularly examined for damages. Any sign of aggressive activity will be noted, and the current Site-114 director informed at the earliest possible convenience. A temporary recall procedure is detailed in Addendum 3199-3. Experiments involving the use of live SCP-3199 instances are strictly prohibited, without approval from at least two personnel of Level 4 security clearance or above. As of December 6th, there are four present and contained instances of SCP-3199. Description SCP-3199 is a sentient humanoid species of a currently unknown biological origin, though tissue samples suggest traces of domestic chicken and chimpanzee DNA. Instances of SCP-3199 are hairless, stained with a thin layer of albumin, and stand at an average of 2.9 meters. Weight averages from 780 kilograms for a matured instance, and 360 kilograms for a hatchling. The necks of SCP-3199 appear dislocated and are capable of twisting approximately 340 degrees, presumably due to the nature of SCP-3199's reproductive cycle. SCP-3199 are opportunistic hunters engaging with live subjects within a currently unidentified radius has been stricken from the document. Within a radius of 0.9 kilometers surrounding hatchlings that have not yet reached full adolescence. Average speed is recorded at 25 km per hour. Upon contact with human or animal subjects, SCP-3199 will proceed to liquefying internal organs and bone structure. The cadaver is then transported to the young and utilized as a form of nourishment. Instances of SCP-3199 have been observed producing large eggs of an off-white coloration and rubbery appearance. These eggs pass through the entity's stomach, esophagus, and eventually out via the mouth, followed by a red viscous substance, first thought to be a form of placenta. Chemical breakdown has determined it to be a highly corrosive material. SCP-3199 shows extreme distress throughout the process, with personnel describing the sound as not dissimilar to a scream presumably due to a biological ingrained method of avoiding extinction, SCP-3199 produces its eggs to fill available space. The anomalous property currently has no known limit, and as a result, may pose an LK-class species transmutation scenario. Termination of SCP-3199 can be performed with relative ease. However, a complete eradication is currently impossible, which has been stricken from the document, difficult as all instances of SCP-3199, regardless of age, carry one egg inside their stomach, ensuring survival for at least one member of their species at all times. Egg samples have proven to be extremely resilient, lacking visible signs of damage after subjection to extreme blood force trauma, extensive pressure exceeding 180,000 psi, high precision blades, serrated and non-serrated, and finally, long-term acid exposure. 
Use of point-blank explosives was suggested, but never tested. Heat exposure has been determined to accelerate hatch rates, and thus detonation may run the risk of a containment breach. See Addendum 3199-4. SCP-3199 was issued Keter classification on October 6, 2017, following the events of a containment breach. SCP-3199's original water containment method was disassembled and replaced with the current resin solution. Addendum 3199-1 On 2017-05 dispatched the following notice regarding SCP-3199. All experiments involving SCP-3199-X samples are strictly prohibited until further notice. Hatching periods have proven too unreliable to warrant extensive research, and as the consequences of a containment breach become more and more apparent, the O5 Council have collectively decided to eliminate risks at the source and prevent testing until new information surfaces. We thank you for your cooperation. SCP-3199 was discovered in Ireland after reports of an unidentified bald creature crying like a banshee from within a dense woodlands resulted in the dispatching of Mole Task Force Omega-19, Omelette. Two personnel were lost in action, their internal organs and jaws having been almost entirely dissolved. During transportation, SCP-3199 produced two offspring, resulting in the deaths of a further six personnel, and the following is stricken from the document. It is entirely unknown as to how the first instance of SCP-3199 came into existence. A thorough examination of the original capture site is currently undergoing confirmation. See Addendum 3199-2. Addendum 3199-2. A thorough sweep of SCP-3199's initial recovery location was performed in an attempt to uncover any further information regarding their origin. Locals claim that the small remote residence in question has been established in the woods for several years. Surface Team D-29 recovered several items of interest, including one bag of assorted thread and needles of various colors and sizes, approximately 13 chicken carcasses based on the collective halves and quarters, with precise incisions located on the underbelly, neck, and thigh. Six of the carcasses had been plucked, with visible human teeth marks lining the bare areas seemingly at random. Several containers, including water bottles and Tupperware boxes, holding an unidentified watery paste. The paste is deep brown in color, and the presence of oxygen becomes viscous and hard. Substance is currently awaiting chemical breakdown. An A5 notebook, brand and heavily scratched, with what was determined to be human fingernails, the words open when we are pure, are written on the front. And finally, two chicken feather quills. The notebook itself consisted of 24 pages of standard lined paper, written in non-anomalous black ink. 19 of these pages consisted of various cuboid patterns and crude childlike illustrations, vaguely resembling SCP-3199. On the remaining five pages, large lines of writing detail the diary of an unnamed individual. Most of what was written was found totally illegible. However, one extract in particular, dated the 6th, 1973, was written with notably higher clarity. If you're reading this, then lucky you. One millionth hour from not, and it'll be fun fun, and the wonderful versatility, vesa, versatility of inferior human DNA will give birth to a new era, a stronger ear, one where, and food and water will be nothing but things of the past, as we will make and make and make more until, for the better future. I really haven't much Tim, time, that's why I envy you so. You'll have all the time you need. Time will be a thing of the, time will be on and on, and death will be life. Life. New life changes, lives, and brings smiles like a freshness. New life will be a part of life from now on. Yeah, that was kind of tough to read. The final page consisted of several ink blots, 
13 instances of the word life in various sizes, and two instances of the words, didn't you want this? Addendum 3199-3, Protocol 3422-B, Poached. Regarding the recontainment of SCP-3199, the following procedure will occur in the event of a breach. On-site personnel with level 1 security clearance or above assume standard lockdown procedure and immediately move to Site 113 unless instructed otherwise. Site 114 is to be filled entirely with distilled water treated with Class A sedatives. Surface Team Tango 306A will be notified and dispatched and instructed to retrieve any instances of SCP-3199's eggs. Any living instances of SCP-3199 will be terminated on site and their remaining eggs will be collected. All egg samples are to be transported to a temporary off-site containment. And finally, Site 114 will then be drained and janitorial staff dispatched to thoroughly clean the area. Personnel attempting to breach one Site 14 before this inspection is complete will be apprehended and suspended accordingly. Note: Some personnel have displayed skepticism regarding the necessity of SCP-3199's current breach protocol. To elaborate, we have reason to believe that fluid is an excellent counter to SCP-3199's anomalous reproductive properties. It appears to enter an inert state in the presence of liquid, regardless of thickness or clarity. There are two theories regarding this occurrence. Number one, SCP-3199's need for survival demands all of its attention to focus on not drowning. It's possible we have found a loophole within its own nature. Number two, SCP-3199 considers the liquid around it as full space, and as a result, does not produce any young when submerged. The latter theory holds more water, as SCP-3199 appears to be totally inactive when submerged. For now, I believe I speak for all of Site-114 when I say it's a relief to at least have a consistent method of containment. Dr. Watt, December 5th, 2017. This is Video Log Interview 3199-1. Interviewer, Dr. Ewing. Interviewed, Lance Corporal Duncan, leading captain of Mobile Task Force Omega-19, first to capture and detain SCP-3199 during initial recovery. Forward, subject had undergone extensive psychiatric therapy prior to interview, and whilst not considered responsible for the deaths of Private McLeod, and Corporal Langley admitted to having not performed the necessary precautions. Playing log now. Take a seat, right? Please, if you would. <clears throat> the job was pretty simple. No auditory or visual triggers that the eggheads in Site 114 knew about. Seems to me as if they'd done a pretty top job scraping the area clean. <laughs> Never is that easy though. Oh man, we landed around 2100 hours. The boys and I had been told that if we couldn't catch the thing, the next best thing would be snapping a frame or two. So they uh, hooked us up with the best in night vision hardware. I know you have pictures, Ella. I know you've got something. You're under no obligation to view the recording. No, no, I, I know that. Just show me a little. Please, go on. We found something within the hour. Almost like a shack. Totally out of scrap metal and wood. Looked more like an oversized chicken coop than anything else. But I don't know that your new monster built it. Just made it a home. And I assume you... Entered as soon as possible? Of course. It was a late shift. Wanted this over as quick as possible. I'd like to say that's why I did it. But, um, I, I can't bring myself to make excuses. I really fucked it, ma'am. Pardon my French. It's perfectly appropriate, all things considered. However, I'm going to have to ask you to continue explaining the procedure. Right, right. Well, I had two of my men stationed at the back. Private McLeod and Captain Langley insisted they take first charge. Fresh out of training, they were. Kids. 
I should be used to it now, but... <sighs> Never seen a smile get cut down so quick. It knew we were there. <laughs> Somehow. Jumped right at Private McCloud and... The fucking teeth out of his head. I see it whenever I blink. Ma'am, that's the shit that stays with you. I assure you, the Foundation will make every measure to ensure financial comfort for the families of your lost men. Could you elaborate on the other casualty? Duncan, please, I have to urge you to continue. The more we know, the more we can do to stop it from happening again. We barely had time to react before it started necking it down the corridor to the right. I guess the adrenaline had just about hit me because I fired off enough rounds to blow a chunk out of its chest. Just as its ugly head was about to hit a corner, I saw... I saw straight fucking moonlight on the other side. Bullseye. Thing let out the most awful scream. I have a beautiful little baby boy at home, Doc. You know that? Irrelevant discussion of domestic life isn't necessary for this procedure, Lance Corporal. Could you please? I have a beautiful baby boy who just loves wailing when he's too cranky to sleep. And you know what? Every time he does, I think about that scream. See it pop it into my head. Think what it did, and his paw gives him a look as if he's gonna bash his fucking head against the wall. We're good men. Please, Ella. Kill that monster. If for no one else. For me. And this log has a note from Dr. Ewing, which reads, I wish the very best to the families of those lost during SCP-3199's initial recovery. Furthermore, I would like to formally request that Lance Corporal Duncan is administered one Class B amnestic at the earliest possible convenience. No excuses. Dr. E. Ewing, Site 114 Director. Addendum 3199-4 Experiment Logs. Experiment 3199-A, Intense Heat Exposure. Subject, one egg sample from SCP-3199. Method, subject relocated to a secure containment cell. Inside temperature of the cell was gradually increased at an average rate of 7 degrees Celsius per minute. Results. After approximately 9 minutes, the egg ruptured violently and produced a single hatchling. On-site personnel reacted swiftly to recontain the newborn instance. However, the excessive internal temperature impacted the physical growth of the young instance, and it reached adolescence at an accelerated rate of 40 seconds. As a result, the now adolescent hatchling produced two further instances of SCP-3199. On-site security response was swift, and all three instances were detained. All future heat testing involving SCP-3199 egg samples has been forbidden until further notice. Experiment 3199-B, Liquid Nitrogen Bath. Subject, one egg sample from SCP-3199. Method. Subject submerged entirely in liquid nitrogen. Security remain on standby throughout the procedure, after concerns regarding another unexpected outbreak. After approximately 45 minutes of exposure, SCP-3199 had reached minus 190 degrees. Following two hours of exposure, the egg sample was removed and placed under extreme pressure. Results Hydraulic press peaked at pressures of around 9,000 psi. Cracks appeared 30 minutes into exposure before the sample shattered. Egg fragments were collected and furthermore pressed into a fine pulp. Zero traces of albumin or yolk were located. Incineration of these remains proved successful at destroying the egg in its entirety. Postscript As Dr. Ewing once put so eloquently, let us not allow these small victories to distract from the larger picture, and whilst you may find the time to celebrate this discovery, we will not excuse apathy towards the entity itself. Dr. Watt Experiment 31C Chemical Analysis of Shell Sample 
10 grams of finely pressed eggshell pulp taken from an SCP-3199 egg. Results. Detailed chemical breakdown shows traces of nacre, enamel, and a currently unidentified carbon compound. Microscope analysis suggests that the shell itself is composed of tightly packed, organized crystals. Practical use of this material is currently undergoing consideration. All right, that about does it for today. Thank you all for listening, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Andre Bichert, Desmond Haskins, and Getzeberry. Thank you all very much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, go to patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.